But you know who is a surprise team in the West? The Jazz. <laughs> this is true. This is true. The I Jazz are fun. They, I thought they were going to be tanking, but they're trying to win. I mean, like, I think this goes to show that it, front offices tank. Players do not tank, right? Like, Laurie Markkinen does not benefit from losing games, and he's been their best player on the court. Jordan Clarkson does not benefit from losing games, and um, it, it's the organization. So we might start to see some people sit out to closer to the end of the season. We might even see some <laughs> trades happen. But I, I think what's sort of different about Utah as a quote-unquote tanking team is they have vets up and down that roster. Like Colin Sexton is also like not a like a kid anymore in this league. Lori Markinen, not a kid. Jordan Clarkson, Mike Conley. Like we're talking about actual veterans that they have on their team. And veterans win games. Whereas, you know, a team like the Houston Rockets, they've got a lot of young kids. They're also in the you know, Wemping Yama sweepstakes, but they have um, a, an edge up on Utah in that way because Young guys don't know how to win in this league just yet, but a lot of the Cavs, I mean, a lot of the Jazz do. Just a lot of former Cavs there, that's why they mess up, but yeah. Yeah. Are there any other teams that are surprising you in the West? I mean, Portland, I mean, if you just look at the top of the standings in the West, I don't think it's necessarily, there are some teams there who we wouldn't expect to see. So I think the Blazers are one of them, though Dame just went out, so let's see what happens with them, but are there any other teams that are surprising you? Um, the Timberwolves, but not for the same reasons that you're mentioning there. <laughs> um, I thought that they've kind of been a surprise. With the Blazers, though, can I just say, Dame, go out for one week. This is kind of the perfect time. They play tonight, but they don't play again until Wednesday. It's like the NBA kind of play. Like it, it was perfect timing on Dame's part. If you're gonna have a cap strain, do it right now. Uh, if you play for the Portland Trail Blazers, but um, I think in the Western Conference, I've been honestly been surprised by the Timberwolves. I thought that they would have a, a stronger start. Spurs, of course, have been another surprise team yes. that have been winning some games on the positive end there. Um, and and out in the East, the Knicks. My goodness. Yeah, the Knicks. The Knicks are definitely a surprise, but. You know who else is a surprise as a player? Your guy, Siakam. <laughs> He's off to an amazing start to start the season. And I know people kind of always just sleep on the wraps or don't pay them attention, but he's having an incredible season. Like, if it keeps up, I know we're only a few games in, but if it keeps up, you know, he's definitely looking at, like, a first team maybe. I mean, he's playing like a first team forward. He's made the second team. He's made the third team. He's only got one more team to make at this point. Uh, he's He's been absolutely phenomenal. In every single game that the Raptors have played, he's been the best player on the court. Um, and, and that includes going up against Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, another sort of surprise team on the bad end. But he, he had 37 points, 10 boards, and 11 assists in that game, or 11 boards uh, and 10 assists in that game. Like a triple-double with 37 points, just absolutely super, superb. And in this last game against the Sixers we saw him have his lowest scoring outage but he had 13 assists which was an absolute career high when the what, what he's shown so far I guess to start the year is you can't play him in single coverage you have to send the double which is what the Sixers did and what happened was he just carved them up and got his 13 assists you also can't sag off of him because he hit four or four threes in the first quarter he's just doing absolutely everything scoring everywhere on the court um and it's been a joy to watch someone who similarly has been scoring everywhere shea gilders alexander i have to give him a shout out for just the start to his season as well are you surprised by siakam's start no not not at all like this is the first off season that he's had since the championship year. And if you remember post championship year, that's when he had his emergence. That's when he became a second team all NBA forward. That's also when he made uh, the all-star team as a starter. That was the last off season that he's had these past two off seasons. He's been having to deal with injuries. The Raptors of course have that Tampa season. So for the first time he's been in the gym and he was in the gym for the entire summer 
working on different aspects of his game and different elements of his game. He's come in, he's an elite defender, always has been, but that shot creation, that footwork, that face-up game that people were looking for that he didn't have, the smoothness to his game. I think a lot of the knocks on his game early on has been that it's a bit herky-jerky, that his movements don't seem as fluid. I don't think that that's something that you can say about Pascal Siakam today. He has just been absolutely phenomenal, whether it's getting to the basket, getting to the free throw line, which has been the biggest jump in his game, I would point to. And also, as we've seen in the last few games, stepping out and, and killing people on the perimeter. So if he keeps playing like this, do you think that maybe makes the ceiling higher for the Raptors? Without a doubt. He came into the season saying he wanted to be a top five player. <laughs> and that's a huge, huge ask. And I said, one of the things that he's going to have to do is show that he can improve his pull-up game, especially from deep and, and extending his range. And that's something, and get to the line. And those are two things that he's done. Um, does it improve the ceiling? Yeah, because I think one of the knocks on the Raptors in years past is who is your number one guy? Um, what do you do when the game slows down and you need to find a bucket and a basket? If Pascal Siakam can prove to be that person, I think that that really bodes well for the Raptors. But it's also not something that's totally needed for this Raptors team, considering they've got all five guys that start for them, that can score, that can play make, and that can create a little bit for themselves as well. Um, you know, Gary Trent Jr. was absolutely phenomenal in the Sixers game. He had 27 points. Not a lot of playmaking. You're not going to get that from Gary Trent Jr., but he had 27 points. And he did that because of the attention that Pascal Siakam drew. So what with this Raptors team, what you have is just guys who can absolutely burn you if it's not Pascal Siakam. If he's getting the brunt of your defense, he is so great at passing out of traps and finding the open guy. And the Raptors have all five guys on the court at any given time that can burn you from anywhere along the perimeter and even inside, which is what they're doing. They've had two games already where all five starters have had at least 15 points. That doesn't happen very often in this NBA. It's a very rare thing. A lot of their, their numbers in terms of all starting five having 15 points are very similar to Denver Nuggets teams of the past um, and, and teams that just fare well with a more egalitarian offense, but they still have that one star, which is a unique, unique build for this team. And I'm really excited to see what they can do this year. Yeah. I know you kind of brought up him being the best player on the court in a lot of the games you played. I know we're going to get Every into this one. a little bit later with one of our guests, but um, outplaying Kevin Durant. I mean, the Nets are a surprise team in a different direction. What's up with them? Their defense. <laughs> like, it's just it been – I mean, they, they have a defensive rating of like 120 right now, which, you know, is on pace for the worst defensive rating of all time in the NBA. <laughs> like, it has just been bad. They cannot contain guys. Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, what did they have last night? A combined 73 points. I think it was 37 and 39 points for them respectively. And they lost that game, and they did it because – they could not stop Luka. They could not stop the Utah Jazz. I think Utah Jazz. The Dallas Mavericks, look at me. Um, and, and that's just how, that's just the story of their entire season. It's been, you're going to get tons of offense from Kyrie Irving. You're going to get tons of offense from Kevin Durant. No one else is really going to contribute very much outside of that. And then they're not going to be able to stop anyone. And that's, you can't have two guys in the NBA. We've seen it with the Lakers. We're seeing it with the Nets. You need a full team. Yeah, um, I'm looking forward to talking uh, about the Nets a little bit more when we have Siobhan coming on later, because I know she has some thoughts about the East. Ooh. All right, we'll be back. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.